Good morning and welcome to the garden. We got a little chilly last night, uh, just about down to mm, 32, but I don't think anything really froze. And I'm coming out today, I am going to open the greenhouse, even though it's early because I've got some errands to run today and I don't wanna forget, I forgot to open the greenhouse yesterday. It got up to like 50 and it was sunny, so things probably got pretty warm in there. I think everything's gonna be fine, uh, but I got I gotta open it today because we're getting into the 60s Fahrenheit. We are kind of moving through all of this cold weather. I think that this frost last night was actually our last frost. I keep checking, as I said the other day, keep checking that 10 day forecast but yeah I'm gonna open up the unheated greenhouse I'll show you how everything's looking in there um but I really wanted to update you on all of those like radishes and um little seedlings that I planted a while back I'll have to look back and see when I actually planted those but the radishes are coming up especially the rat's tail radishes which I'm super excited to see so those are the ones that you don't harvest for actual like radish um, roots you actually eat the seed pods which I think is gonna be a really good solution to me for my radish problems because I typically have trouble getting good roots on my radishes so this way we're not even growing radishes for roots but they're coming up they're looking really good so I'll go ahead and show you those now and I popped in a few other radishes in a couple other places and they look like they're coming up radishes are super rewarding and even though I have had trouble getting actual harvests of radishes. They're so good when it comes to just germinating quickly and getting up and growing. Radishes and arugula, like if you want kind of um, as instant gratification as you could probably get gardening, because gardening typically it's not provide a lot of instant gratification. Radishes and arugula, like just so nice to see. But I've also got some of my spinach coming up too which that is sometimes a really hard uh plant for me to so grow look, okay so here's a couple of the radishes that i popped in little radish seedlings i think these are like a breakfast radish i think that's what i put in there cute 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 coming up and then over here is the spinach so i'm going to have to go back and check the exact date when I planted this spinach because this is some of the best germination that I've gotten and the happiest looking spinach that I've, I've had in my garden. And so I wanna really go back and note when I planted that. This is what I have learned with gardening is that there's these you know windows in time when if you plant the plant at the perfect time, everything goes really well and you just kinda of have to trial and error experiment and then find like that time to plant and so I have I've had a little bit of issues with good germination on spinach sometimes it's been slower or harder to get going but this is coming up really beautifully and so I want to kind of make it make a mental note of when I planted that and so then next year I can just do the exact same thing it's kind of how I learned with my peas I always plant peas right around um, Valentine's Day and they, they come up beautifully, they do well. That's a great time in my garden. I think that's when I planted that spinach. I think it's been, gosh, has it been a month? No, surely not. Clean the camera off a little bit. I don't think it's been a whole month. So, okay. So maybe it's been like two or three weeks, but yeah, I wanna make a note of that because um, that's just really good to know for my future garden planning. That spinach is looking good. And the let me go show you the rat's tail radishes now because they are, they're pretty, they're really big radish seedling. So they are over here in this bed. I've still got these containers I've got to deal with. But here's all the rat's tail radishes. They're big, beautiful seedlings, really large compared to other radishes. And they're going in and around this Russian sage that I got over here. And these are foxgloves. Oh, and there's some growth on this Russian sage plant. That's great. I was a little worried about this plant. I hadn't seen any, any growth on it, but we're starting to see some sprouts. Okay. The perennials are all popping up now. Here's all the echinaceas that are over here in this bed. You know, they're all starting to grow and really come out. Now is the time when when things start coming alive. I did have a dahlia in the corner of this bed. It's the only one that I didn't pull out. I pulled out a lot of my dahlias because I was just having so many pest issues with them. They just weren't doing well, but I left this one here. But I don't see any signs of growth on it and it may have gotten damaged by that really cold frost that we Last got. Last year, 
well the winter before this past winter I overwintered it it did fine but we didn't get any freeze nearly as cold as that really really deep freeze that we got so that might have been too much technically we're a zone seven I'm zone seven a um but that that one frost we got was was pretty chilly so that might have taken out that dahlia and honestly as much as I love dahlias I think they are stunning plants they got so infested by spider mites that I just I just I ended up just pulling them all out because it wasn't worth it I actually got some questions about pest control measures so one of you followers actually asked me about what I do for pest measures in this kind of small urban garden setting and I do get tons and tons of pests it you know we're hot we're humid here it's it's a nice place if you're a bug <laughs> and so we get a lot of pests and one of the things that i do do is if there's a plant like for example dahlias that just gets consistently destroyed by spider mites i've just started eliminating those and and switching them out in favor of plants that i know aren't as bothered by a particular pest so salvia Spider mites don't seem to bother salvia and lantanas and I'll grow those rather than growing the dahlias because it's just, it's just easier. I do use some pest control methods. So I do spray BT if I see a bunch of like budworm, dam budworm damage on my petunias when the cabbage moths come out and they're taking after like the brassicas, you know, the broccolis and collards. When I plant the collards out at the end of August, I always have issues with those caterpillars um, trying to eat them. And I do sometimes have budworms eating the leaves and flowers on my, like my petunias. So I will go in with a BT spray, which and it's a natural uh, bacteria that is it's technically organic so i do try to stick with organic products and um, i'll just spray the leaves down like once a week and I, I find that to be doable with the spider mites i believe you can use the bt for them too but i've just always struggled to um to stay consistent especially with like landscape plants which is where i plant um the dahlias so for some reason the petunias in the pots it's like easier for me to manage i'll go ahead and spray my plants once a week with bt and that takes care of it um but for uh for like landscape plants i just don't want to mess with it um so i'll just switch it out and next year plant a different plant uh i do sometimes get some aphids and what i will do with aphids is mostly spray them off with water and i haven't had a super um a super big problem with aphids if it's usually just like one or two plants that gets hit with it and so i'll either spray them off with water if i can deal with that or honestly um sometimes i'll just pull the plant out again and just forget about it or let the aphids just eat the plant and use it as like a host plant and just chalk it up i <laughs> i like to be fairly low maintenance with my gardening when it comes to pest control i just it becomes too much of a process for me so bt is the only spray that i really use consistently i do also have a um, protectant spray from arbor and i have used that as well on kind of like the budworm kind of issues one of the other big pests that i have are slugs and slugs are so hard so i did move all of my mulch in the garden to cedar mulch and that has helped quite a bit so cedar mulch has a little bit of a different look than like those you know um dark wood mulches i don't mind the light color and it actually does i think reduce a bit of the slug pressure because it's just slugs don't like to eat and live in the cedar quite as much as they do all the other things i still definitely have slugs but i did notice a pretty good um change pretty you know significant drop down in slugs when i moved the cedar mulch and then i also have been planting out seedlings so you may have heard me talk about in other videos that i have been um selecting to start a lot of plants indoors start them as seedlings and then plant them out when they're bigger plants i don't have so many slugs that if i plant out like a mature healthy plant that it'll get just completely eaten by slugs knock on wood I've never had that happen, um, but what they do get and what is really problematic is they get all of the seedlings. So when I am planting little, you know, seeds, direct sowing them into the ground and I've got the little itty bitty seedlings coming up, the slugs seem to just love that and they go after it. And so 
that is when I put down slug bait, which I don't, I don't love to use just because I just don't like, I don't know. I just don't want to put a bunch of stuff in my garden in general, but it is technically organic. Um, and you can get the little pellets. You can get them at your garden center. They have them at like Home Depot, Lowe's. You can actually order them on Amazon too. Um, and they're just like these little white pellets. They're kind of unsightly, but they do really work. So if you have a slug problem and you're just like, I don't care, I need them gone. You can get them, they're organic and they will work. And I'll just like sprinkle a little ring, you know, around a seedling, or if I have a bunch of seedlings, I'll just sprinkle the slug bait in and amongst the seedlings. And that does um, pretty much for the most part, take care of the slugs. I, that's one of the, that's one of the pest prevention methods that I've actually used that, that really works. That really works. That and spraying the BT. The BT really works when you spray it. If you consistently spray it, like on the collard greens, I kept up with them over um, in the summer and it was fine. You know, I got a little bit of damage, but not my, my crop didn't get taken out. I am gonna explore using a little bit of like bug nutting perhaps for some of my plants this year. I'm kind of exploring that, but the BT, the slug bait, and maybe a little like um, arbor insect repellent if I need to is, is what I've been using. And that has been taking care of most of my pests. And then just, you know, also like sometimes things just get taken out by the pests and as discouraging as it is, you know, that just happens in gardening too. So don't feel too bad if that happens to you. But those are my, those are my big pest prevention methods that I use. Of course, you know, I also have the squirrels, which I still haven't figured out a great solution to. I have to keep a physical barrier between the squirrels and my plants. And so I'm continuing to explore different options. I did use some bug netting to help with the squirrels. That worked. Um, and I think maybe this next winter I'll do some more with um, like chicken wire, um, like chicken wire enclosures to keep them out. But I also have chipmunks and they can get in under the chicken wire. So <laughs> it's just part of it. Okay. Let's open the greenhouse where you can see some of the squirrel damage. And I'm gonna pull out those clematis cause they don't need to be in there anymore. And we'll make sure we get this thing opened up and aired out for the day. All right, it was in the 30s overnight and it is 50 degrees in here, which is great. So even though I let it, it probably got over 100 degrees since I had it closed up yesterday, which is not great, but everything looks okay. Just dried out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and water in here. You can see all my peas. These I planted in like, I think I planted them in January. So I will 100% be doing peas in the unheated greenhouse again next winter because how fun is this? Isn't this nice? So hopefully I'll be getting some peas on here soon, but they just look beautiful and add to this <laughs> greenhouse. And then all my little baby pollinator plants coming on up. I can't wait to do a little pollinator garden with these this summer. I'm so excited about it. There's so many fun things. I just keep watching all of my milkweed. I'm so proud. Milkweed is my pride and joy this year. Hopefully we get a bunch of monarchs, but I'm just, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that they did so well in this unheated greenhouse. Another thing that I will be repeating, making a note to myself, winter, sow these in January in the unheated greenhouse. Beautiful, great way to have milkweed. I've never successfully gotten milkweed growing like this before, but this is my new method. Even the red butterfly milkweed is coming up. Awesome. That is so exciting. I think I am going to start fertilizing in this tray. These fever few over here are looking a little bit yellow. So even though these guys don't really have their next set of true leaves, there's enough that are getting some true leaves. So I'll probably put a little liquid fertilizer next time I water these and just give the plants a little bit of a boost. And that'll just so help. That's just a little update from the garden from today. I am going to go ahead, give a little bit of water to some of those guys in there. And um, yeah just enjoy a nice quiet morning in the garden it's gonna be some beautiful weather the next couple of days so we're definitely gonna be getting out here and 
coming up with more projects and more things to do. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.